Hi, I'm Irvin, and I'm an Adamaniac. Today we open on Woodrow Roosevelt High. So, is it named after Woodrow Wilson, or Teddy Roosevelt, or did somebody who doesn't actually know the presidents name the school? Dick Grayson is in the gym, working out and watching his favorite cheerleader, Susie. Gosh, Susie, terrific! Did you write it yourself? Oh, heck no, Miss Browning, our poetry professor. Let's take a break, gang. Anyone for a drink? I'll take a margarita. On the rocks, no salt. Me. I guess milk's good, too. Money's even better. Let me try. Oh, hey kids, everyone, come on, it's Christmas. <laughs> Why didn't my school have a vending machine like that? So these kids won't be hurting for lunch money anytime soon. Silver dollars. A strange, disturbing bonanza from a gimmick milk machine. Unless the cops confiscate it. Hey, no fair! Those kids paid for those silver dollars. Give them back! Either of you men fear what I fear? That Gotham's teenagers will have too much financial independence? The Joker? Exactly, Chief O'Hara, the Joker. That most pestilent of predators. The clown prince of crime. This smells like an opening gambit of his. Seriously, I have no idea how this smells like the Joker. Giving silver dollars to kids through a rigged machine is a gambit for what? It doesn't make sense, but how they get from that to the Joker makes even less sense. Still, they call Batman. At Wayne Manor, Bruce is enduring a politician who wants him to run for mayor. Every election they ask, every election he says no, they don't get the message. Alfred rescues him. It's the bat phone, huh? Uh, thank you, Alfred, for reminding me. Aunt Harriet didn't catch that last word. What kind of phone? By the way, Alfred, your voice carries a lot more than you think. Yes, sir. Prepare yourself for a blow. Someone has struck at Woodrow Roosevelt High. We think it's the Joker. Good grief. I'm on my way. It's a most heinous crime, Batman. They gave teenagers money. Good heavens, it's worse than I thought. I'm still really vague on how we got the Joker out of this, but I guess Batman will find out. He tells Alfred that if Dick calls in, tell him to stay right where he is. Looks sinister, doesn't it? Joker released from jail one week ago, immediately buys control of one-armed bandit novelty company. Makers of coin-operated gadgets, gum machines, pinballs, that sort of harmless junk. There's nothing harmless about the Joker, we all know that. That's not what he said, detective. He said the machines the place makes are harmless. Are you listening at all? Or about a machine which returns 20 silver dollars for a dime. Hold on. I count four. Who got 20? There obviously weren't that many in her hand. Where'd he come up with that? The thing Gordon and O'Hara can't figure out is, why would the Joker do this? I can make a guess. But we're not going to get to hear it. Yes. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. Put him on the conference phone. It's Principal Schoolfield, Woodrow Roosevelt High. Commissioner Gordon? Speaking. Another machine has gone mad in the library. Instead of candy bars, it's dispensing negotiable stocks and bonds. If my school had machines like this, I might have stayed in high school. Batman tells the principal to have the student council president, one Richard Grayson, of course, call a meeting in his office. Batman is on his way. I think my guess was right. What, Batman? No time to lose. Chief O'Hara, get me a visual ID file on the Joker. Meet me at the Batmobile. Yes. And we still don't get to hear what it is. In the principal's office, the other council guys are saying, hey, if all you have to do to get money is put a dime in a machine, why go to classes? Dick is appalled, of course. What does Susie have to say? I say, has anyone tried Mr. Schoolfield's coffee machine? <laughs> hey, not bad for old Schoolfield. Quarters. <laughs> hey, not bad, eh? How about that? 
Wise up, you guys. Life isn't this easy. Well, that's easy for you to say. You're the ward of that rich millionaire. That has nothing to do with it. That's right. The fact that I have all the money in the world has nothing to do with it. I'd be this sappy with or without money. Just then, Batman pulls up. He tells the kids that Robin isn't here for the girls to mob, and if they touch the Batmobile, it'll go boom in their faces. So stay back. Meanwhile, across town at a little bistro, something weird is happening. A drunk guy makes it all the way to the jukebox. Oh, besides that, two guys with nylons on their heads come in and clean out the register, whereupon the jukebox closes back up. At the school, Batman explains that this money thing could be a way to encourage them to drop out of high school, whereupon they'll have no other recourse but to join criminal gangs. He actually said that. Susie wants to know who's behind all this, and Batman says, I'll do better than that, I'll show him to you. He shows them slides of the Joker and tells them to look closely at the fake flower in his lapel. Sometimes it shoots out water, sometimes powder, other times knockout gas. Hey! Holy magician! <laughs> Hello, kiddies! Meet the Joker! They realize he hasn't done anything wrong yet, since in 1966, spraying that stuff in a kid's face wasn't considered assault on a minor. Batman decides to arrest him for loitering on school property, which is a $5,000 fine and five years in prison. Excuse me? Ah, uh, no. Wrong, kiddies. Look up the statute. In Gotham City, the crime of loitering requires the loiterer to remain in the same spot for over two minutes. You, you jailhouse lawyer, the tricky trickster, he's outwitting us. Don't give away the fact that you're Robin with obvious statements like outwitting us and holy magician, whatever you do, Dick. The Joker takes his leave. Well, goodbye, kiddies. And remember, I was here, huh? <laughs> what an odd parting remark. Yeah, why do you want us to remember he was here? From the lips of a crook. It can mean only one thing. Establishing an alibi. Right. Gee whiz. Alibi for what? For the jukebox robbery, of course. Batman hates the fact that he's the Joker's alibi. He'll head over there and see what he can find with his bat ding fogs. Scarcely 500 yards away, behind this innocent-seeming candy store, an abandoned garage, now headquarters of the Joker and his current gang, the Bad Pennies. High school dropouts, most of them. Stay in school. We get it. I dropped out of high school and look where I am today. I only have two degrees, a book in print, and I get to do this. Talk about a fate worse than death. They look at a couple of new machines, then someone else arrives. Sweet Sue, shiniest of my bad pennies. <laughs> Poor Dick just can't get a break. The girl he's hot for is playing for the Joker. Why? Ah, I see you have this stuff. Of course. Any trouble getting it? Heck no. Like I told you, being chief cheerleader puts me on the student council. Once you're on that, you can get away with anything. Oh, let's see. Hands off, not until I get paid. Trusting little wench, aren't you? I'm a crook joker, just like you. Now, where's the payoff? Ah, the purest motivation of all. Greed. Okay, then. Of course, one of the goons has to hit on her, even though she's undoubtedly underage. Hiya there, lamb chap. You busy tonight? You lowlife, get away from me. Now, look here, baby. I have plans. Are you stupid or something? The reason I've taken up crime is so I can get a taste of the finer things in life. Yeah. Now, beat it! <laughs> Of course, that's the only way. Hooking up with a rich kid like, oh, I don't know, Dick Grayson, who already thinks the sun rises and sets on you, nah, that's not going to do you any good. Susie isn't too bright. A rhinestone bracelet, a fox fur stole, and one full quart of imported Mexican perfume. 
Oh, oh, gee, Joker. I'm sorry I sassed you. Why, this is like some lovely dream. Why, this is like some lovely dream. A fake bracelet, a fake fur, and cheap perfume are what it takes to buy her. These are the finer things in life. Finer than what? The envelope she gave Joker has exam papers in it. He says that's the key to his plan. I still don't understand. And neither does he. X plus Y times X plus Y. Holy alphabet, what is it? If you'll excuse me, Master Robin. Yes, Alfred? The solution is uh, x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Gee, sure. Why didn't I know that? Because you didn't read the script as closely as he did. Batman comes tearing in to tell everyone that he learned nothing. That was important. Gosh, in school, morale and a tailspin. Come a month from now, they'll be dropouts by the bushel. If he waits that long. Huh? I didn't want to cause panic at that student meeting. But I think the Joker has some other dirty plan afoot as well. He has no idea what it is, but suspects it has something to do with gimmick machines and Roosevelt High School. How he figured that out, I shall never know. They're off to stake out the school and find out how the Joker is getting in to rig the machines. At the school, we see how he's doing it. Or more precisely, who's doing it for him? That comes as no surprise. She calls the Joker and he tells her to get out her crooked keys, get key 17, and do what he tells her. Gain level set. Okay. Set the anti-theft systems. Let's go. And put big bright lights on it so everybody knows where it is and can figure out how to disable it. Good job. Inside, they run into Susie. They don't ask why she's there in the middle of the night. She says she saw a suspicious character in the gym. They go there and see a machine that's been tampered with. This might be tricky. Get out your batarang. I'll slip in a dime. Holy ball and chain! Let's get out our cutting tools. Oh, knockout gas. Convenient that they both fell against the machine and didn't fall backwards and snap their legs in two. What a lucky turn of events. They wake up in electric chairs in the back of a big truck. Joker and Susie are in the cab. With a microphone that scrambles their voices, Joker explains the situation. Holy Las Vegas, where are we? In a strange kind of game room, boy, plunder. Do you see the machine next to you? Right. And it's going to spin around merrily and merrily. What's the payoff? Three Liberty Bells, your freedom, and $50,000 cash. Three oranges, your freedom only. And if it's three lemons, which the percentages say is the more likely? 50,000 volts of electrifying electricity, my fettered fat man. And if it comes up nothing, say two oranges and a bell, I guess this one always gives you three of something. I've never seen one like that before, but I've only played a handful of slot machines. And in 1966, I was underage, so I didn't play any. Let's see what happens. Horror, one lemon. Double horrors. Two lemons. The third reel continues to spin as the narrator reminds us to watch the conclusion tomorrow night. Same bat time, same bat channel. That reel spun for a full 24 hours while Batman and Robin sat there and watched it. That's mean even for the Joker. I'm Irving and I'm an Adamaniac.